we meet as God's people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to you all on this Remembrance Sunday. This online service is a service for all of the communities which make up the Trinitine Parish. Um, towards the end of the service, there is the Roll of Honour, which um, names all of the people who died in the two Second World Wars. And also, sadly, David Barnsdale, who died now 10 years ago in Afghanistan. It's an opportunity for us as communities to come together in our worship, to remember the fallenness of humanity, to remember the harm which we do, but also to commit ourselves to peace. We are living again in, in troubled times. The trouble, of course, is caused instead by a virus rather than humanity. But it reminds us of our need to work together as people, to live as God's people. And so we're going to begin our service by singing Eternal Father, Strong to Save. Entirely up to you whether you join in singing or whether you just read the words. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. The Royal British Legion have encouraged us all to mark Remembrance Sunday at home, either watching a video like this or joining in on the Cenotaph. 
We don't mind if you catch up with us um, and watch this later if you prefer, if you want to join the national celebrations. As part of the 75th anniversary, the theme is coming home. And so today in our worship, we're going to hear from Beth, one of the people who served at home, serving with the NAFI. And Beth talks to some of the children from one of our church primary schools and she um, explains about her service and some of the people that she met in that time. But as we gather to worship, let us commit ourselves to peace. We meet in the presence of God. We may commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. And so let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as it draws close to the 11th hour, let us take a moment of silence to pause and to remember. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
when you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we gather together our thoughts and prayers. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for our Bible reading. A reading from the Gospel according to St Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continuing with the theme of coming home, children and students across the whole of the Tring Parish have been celebrating and commemorating the end of the Second World War in a variety of creative ways. There's one in particular we would like to share with you. Two Year Six students from Bishopwood School recently interviewed Beth Scraggs, a faithful member of the St Peter and St Paul's congregation and a Second World War veteran. They spoke to her about her experiences at the end of the war. We often and quite rightly hear from lots of male veterans, but this year we would also like to share some insights from a woman's perspective. What you are about to view is an excerpt taken from a longer video and we hope you will agree it's really great to see the generation's youth and experience meeting on such a profound occasion. I won't say any more, I shall leave it to Laura and Lewis from Bishopwood School to lead the way. six of Bishop, at Bishopwood School and we would like to know more about the homecoming after the Second World War. Today we are talking to Beth Scraggs who was in the Second World War to find out about her experiences. Hi Beth, lovely to meet you. If it's not too rude, how old are you? How old am I now? 95. Well, how um, how old were you at the begin at the end of the Second World War? I was 14 when war started and 20 when it finished. What was your role in the war? When I was 18, we all had to sign, go and sign and we were told to do certain jobs. My job was to be either a nurse or working in a munitions factory. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do something for the men and women who were serving. And so I volunteered for the NAFI, 
that's the Navy, Army, Air Force Institutes, and there was one of them at wherever, wherever there was an army camp or an RAF aerodrome or a ship where there was a naval depot, they had a naffy, and there were girls and ladies who were there, stationed there, living there, working there, and that's, and that's what I did. What were the roles of other women there? What were the roles of other women you met? Oh, gosh. There's a picture here of the lady who came with me and her mother. Her mother drove an ambulance and she was driving it when there was a big, big air raid up in Newcastle. And if that motor, if that ambulance had broken down, this lady would have had to have mended it as well. So they had to know just not about driving and what to do um, to anybody who was hurt. They had to know what to do with the ambulance as well to get it moving again. Can you tell us about the days before D-Day? The days before D-Day, um, we thought it was going to happen on the Sunday, but the weather was very, very bad, so it's put back till the Tuesday, the 6th of June. And um, I was at the second camp then, and we had closed for the night. This was on the 8th of June, two days afterwards. Um, we had closed for the night and we were told to open up again because those men were going to be going over, driving their lorries down to Portsmouth, over, that, over to France, to where the, the fighting was just beginning then. And uh, so at three o'clock in the morning, we waved them off. Um, the, the sea looked absolutely full of ships and aeroplanes, all the men going over. It was a fantastic sight, and we were all very, very pleased it was going to happen because things had not been happening very well. We'd been losing lots of various things, and lots of men were dying, and lots of men were being taken prisoners of war. And, and it wasn't just British soldiers. We had Americans and we had South Africans. We had Indians, lots and lots of different nationalities. And Australians and New Zealanders, of course. And Canadians as well. What did you do when the war ended? Did you re regain your independence? I was at another, I was at an RAF station then. And, um, but I didn't come home straight away. Not everybody came home straight away. Um, the war finished on the 8th of May, 1945, and I was still working till March 46. I stayed on, and I could have stayed on had I wanted to, but I was lucky enough that I had to give up my normal job. And when I finished work, when it was time for me to leave the Nuffy and go back home, I then was able to go back to my job. So I had my job waiting for me. So. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking to us. You are an inspiration and a role model. Bless you both for listening to me and being patient because when you get older, your hearing is not as good. It isn't. <laughs>
This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. May God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. May God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. May God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. May God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. May God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. May God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God calls us to peace. In God's justice is our peace. Christ calls us to be God's people. In Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. And if you're not with anyone at the moment you're able to share that with, maybe you can take some exercise at some point today and and share God's peace with someone that you see out and about in the community. We're now going to remember all those who died in the two world wars and in Afghanistan. This role of honour mentions all of the people from Aldbury, Longmaston, Putnam, Tring and Wilston. Putnam is a thankful village, so in the First World War Everyone from that community, I think 15 of them, returned home. There was only a community of about 70 people at the time. In the Second World War, one person was killed. They're remembered on Tring's War Memorial. There are many names on this list. It's hard to take all of them in, especially when we had all of our communities together. And we're very grateful to Tring Park School, who have provided us with the music which accompanies this.
And so now I'd like us all to commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Um, if you didn't download an order of service, you can still join in. The response is very simple. It is, we will. Let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. We strive for all that makes for peace. We will. We seek to heal the wounds of war. We will. We work for a just future for all humanity. We will. Let us join together in the national anthem. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all its people, unity, peace and concord. And to us and all of God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you now and forever. Amen. If whilst you're out for some exercise, you want to join and to have a, um, not join, but if you want to come in and to have a moment of individual prayer, um, you could pause at the War Memorial or through the week, Twing Church will be open every day from 10 till 12. Um, Albury Church will be open every day from 11 till 3. Wilston Church will be open on Sundays from 10 till 12 and Long Marston Church will be open on Sundays from two till four. And so there's an opportunity to come and sit individually um, for, for private prayer during um, these next four weeks. This afternoon, there's going to be a concert as well um, on, on the theme of remembrance about autumn, about decay, and also the hope of autumn. Um, we're grateful to the Piano and More team who are putting on that music for reflection, which will be appropriate both for this time of year, but also on this Remembrance Sunday. You'll find that also on our website under the News and Events and then Piano and More tab. Let's go in peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.